Hello again, it is Crew Call here presented by Flow Racing. Flow Racing is the new home of NASCAR Roots. You can subscribe today at www.flowracing.com. This is Crew Call on Motor Racing Network. Todd Gordon, a 25-time and championship-winning crew chief, and Steve Post here from the Motor Racing Network. So glad you've joined us. And uh, Todd, how are you? How are things? I'm great. I'm That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you've thought out I've from the weekend. I've thought out. Oh, my gosh, was it a cold one up at Martinsville. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. And the fans, uh, I, I just I just want to salute the hearty fans that were there and the fans that, that were there Friday night and back Saturday night and stayed the whole – I mean – Place was rocking. There's no doubt about it. I think we had to be rocking to stay warm, though. I mean, um, it was cold. It was really, really cold. But um, and and the cold NASCAR racing. What what was your take on what we saw on the racetrack? Does it does it all tie together? I think. I think it does. Yeah, I think it does. And if you look in the if you look through history, we had a race a couple years ago. It got snow delayed, right? That's right. Onto a, onto a Monday, and um, when that racetrack, my experience there. Is a racetrack when it's when it's below sixty and sunny, the racetrack doesn't get warm enough to take rubber. Yeah, and uh, and you know that's that's not a Goodyear thing. That's just a temperature thing. Um, I talked to Greg Stucker about this on on uh, a Monday Night Series yeah. call, and uh, but when you're it was forty one degrees yeah. in a nighttime race, and the racetrack never took rubber, and and when the racetrack would take rubbers, when guys had to start moving up. And when you got when when you kind of get some rubber in a racetrack and guys start moving up, then you've got guys that can curl. You know, Ryan was really good about just curling around that curb. Right. Actually, Joey Joey Logano had the conversation. What makes Ryan so good there in the long run? Because you've worked with both of us and you've seen it. So, right. but Ryan was really disciplined on curling a curb. But other guys would have to run up and and dime in the racetrack, and that opened up passing lanes. And we never saw the racetrack transition to taking no. any rubber, and and just ended up being around the bottom. So. Um, you know, Greg 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 Strucker from uh, Goodyear. from Goodyear talked about uh, they're they're looking at what they can do for the fall race if they can do anything differently maybe maybe a little bit of grip maybe a little bit of, of change that, that could help that rubber in um, but even he said forty one degrees I'm I'm not gonna get rubber sticks racetrack the challenge is is that that race is November or the end of October and it's the penultimate race which you want to have we want Martinsville to be there where it's at but. Yes. That calendar falls weird. But it's not a night race. Good. Yeah, that's it's true. It's a three o'clock in the afternoon race. So so you start that race like you run right through the money time of we, when the sun has the most effect which on Which that car. puts the rubber down in the yes. first half of the race, and then yep. you live with it the rest of the day. And yep. that, yeah. Yeah. So makes I, sense. I, I think there's there's something there. And, um, you know, obviously new car, shifting. There's a lot of uh, 400 laps. There's a di different environment. But – um. Uh, you know, let's let's not write off Martinsville in a oh, new yeah, car, and no. let's not blame. I, I think the first thing we we've got to look at here from his history, this place when it's been really cold doesn't race as well because it doesn't take rubber, and, yeah. and that's we didn't see any rubber get in the racetrack. Right. So, um, you know, a, a cool cool night race, but um, as I was saying earlier, yeah. I think. Uh, I think there's a month that starts in A that would be a great for a night race at Martinsville, but it's not April. Not April. Let's try. Let's see. Uh, August. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I um uh, on the performance front, um, I've and I I don't know that I've shared on this show. I think I have. I am very very high. Yeah, I know I did. We talked about it after Richmond. I am very very high on the Rudy Fugel William Byron combination, and nothing has uh, nothing has gone downhill on that. Um, they really are working well together, and what little they had to dial that race car in, they won the battle off from pit road when it was critical, and then it was a matter of clicking off laps. That was it was impressive to see how good they were. Yeah, and and you know I, I I'll be honest, I rewatched the race on uh, on Monday morning at four thirty in the morning. But, okay, yeah. Uh, um, uh, you know, after knowing the outcome, and you yeah. go back and watch. William had run the nine car down for, I mean, the nine car, yeah. Chase, Chase led the first, what, 180 some laps? 185, yep. Okay. Um, but William had gotten to the point where he was right on, on Chase's yeah. bumper. He just couldn't get around him. And, and that goes back to the racetrack in the rubber and was tough to get passing. But, uh, once they got him off pit road first, he pretty Came much controlled match. the rest of the day. Yeah, he really did. 
It was really, it was, it was really neat. That's for sure. Um, I also think it's. I, I think we're seeing William. He ran the truck series mm-hmm. race. Rudy was on the pit box with Kevin Bono Mannion. That never would hurt you. I, I see you. I see you, crew chiefs, on Saturday, particularly where we have a race with a new tire. I see you guys all the time on Saturday or truck races, whenever it is, walking up and down pit road looking at tires. I think Rudy took a better seat. He was right alongside, and and that doesn't hurt you getting into the rhythm of Martinsville and the routine as well. Not at all. Not at all. You know. Roger has this this thing. It's called effort equals re- results, right. and uh, um, that's that's where this is, team's at. They're they're putting the effort in, you know, yep. to run the truck race. I, I did wonder with the shifting piece, although you don't shift yeah. in a truck, right? You know, so I, I guess it, it worked out there. Uh, got a win on on in the truck series on Thursday mm-hmm. night, and uh, and came back and had a, that's just momentum. Anytime you can go to victory lane, it doesn't matter what you're in. Yeah, it could be mom's go kart. I, yeah. I don't care. About I agree. Going to a victory lane is a confidence booster. So um, great effort by those guys. They've like we talked about at Richmond. Um, they've been doing the work. They've been they've been working their way through it. Put themselves in great positions, and uh, they dominated this one. Did you have shifting at Martinsville on your bingo card of what things we would see this year? I wondered about well it. the way the. the way- at the beginning of the year, probably not, but the way this no. year has unfolded, yes. I think it's become a reality for a lot of these. They they shifted a lot at Richmond the week before, and of course, road courses, they, there's been a lot of shifting. Yeah, with the sequential gearbox, there's a couple things. One, we've gone to five gears. Uh, two, we've gotten rid of the, of, the, of the gear restrictions that we used to have. Like Martinsville, we used to have, third gear had to be a minimum of a 1.38 multiplier. So right. a 38% change. That's a big change. You wouldn't right. downshift that. Well, we've gotten rid of that because we've gone to common gear stacks in the transaxle, right. and we've got five gears. So the separation of the gears is smaller. smaller. And, and these cars ran fourth gear. They didn't even run fifth gear. Right. They raced in fourth gear. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know that they'd be shifting. I talked to Ryan Blaney about it. He said, well, we had probably 350 green flag laps. I think I had seven, 1,400 shifts. Yeah. Uh, it's just um, every, every corner was down and up. Down and up. Fourth, third gear down, back yep. up to fourth. Yep. yep. So... Yeah, and, and the and the shifter makes it the sequential makes it easier for them, uh, but you still got to take a hand off a wheel. Yep, and in the corners, it, it almost might have been a blessing there wasn't multiple grooves because there's a lot going on. I, I forget who it was I talked to. Um, don't you have enough going on in the turns at Martinsville without shifting? And the driver was like, uh, "Yeah, we do. This is going to be interesting." Um, maybe the fact that it never really, never really took Robert might have, might have helped him with that, that they didn't have the multiple grooves and guys diamonding and everything else. But, um, fascinating stuff. That's for sure. Speaking of fascinating stuff, we have Rodney Childers joining us here from Stuart Haas Racing. You know, you can subscribe to Flow Racing. It is the new home of NASCAR Roots. Catch all the NASCAR Wheel and Modified ARCA series, or ARCA Menard series, that is, Pinty's and NASCAR Weekly Racing Series on flowracing.com. Subscribe today. This weekend, South Boston, Florence Motor Speedway, Langley, Meridian, Evergreen. I need to give special mention to our buddy Jeff Striegel up at Berlin. He's the general manager of Berlin, yep. our, uh, one of our, one of our uh, broadcasters in the uh, booth for Motor Racing Network. The Icebreaker at Berlin kicks off their season this weekend. You can get it all on Flow Racing. It's www.flowracing.com. Subscribe today. Coming up, Rodney Childers. Welcome back. It is Crew Call presented by Flow Racing, the new home of NASCAR Roots. You can subscribe today at www.flowracing. As we teased and talked about in the opening segment, let's go to the hotline. Joining us from over at Stuart Haas Racing is Rodney Childers. Hello, Rodney. Welcome into Crew Call. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Great to uh, great to catch up with you, Rodney. Eight races deep into the 2022 season, uh, kind of give us the lay of the land or assess uh, what's been going on with you guys and your team. Yeah, I mean overall, we've had um, you know a lot of good cars in the last probably five weeks. Um, yes, honestly, just spinning out in practice at Fontana kind of put us behind. Um, not not from a car standpoint, but, you know, kind of made us all gun shy in a way, you know, whether it was from a setup standpoint or, you know, driving the car and and all that. And we, we kind of played it really careful there for a few weeks. And now it's kind of back to, to racing hard every week and trying to, to do the right things and, and having speed in the cars and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, overall, um, you know, everybody.
everybody's done a really good job with the car and just learning it and, and Kevin, you know, learning how to drive it and, and all that. So we're not exactly where we need to be by any means, but, uh, you know, it's not from lack of effort and everybody's doing a really good job with it. Yeah. You talk about a quiet start to the season, it, you know, ninth in points and you're tied for the most top tens in the series. As I was looking through the stats, uh, good qualifying session at Martinsville last week. Uh, but by the end of the race, it seemed like you were lacking a little bit of something. Um, it hasn't through the last couple of years been your strength to go to Martinsville. Uh, you have, you have thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, this, this past time, uh, we ended up just fighting too tight, you know, pretty, pretty majorly too tight. Um, you know, I, I'd have to say that going to the simulator the last probably month has saved our butts a few times and we've changed things at the simulator and made us run better at the racetrack. And, Last week we went to the simulator and we were like spinning out up off the corner and we changed the rear springs around a lot and, and changed a lot before we went. And, um, we unloaded and was just plowing tight off the corner. And it was kind of just, you know, you're kind of in a spot where you can't get it out. You can't change rear springs. You don't have a track bar. You can move. You don't have, you know, all those things that we had in the past and we had taken 5% of wedge out and we were still too tight. So, um, it just, we just kind of missed it a little bit. And, um, it seemed like the track was getting tighter as the night went and we kept freeing it up and we weren't gaining on it. But, um, you know, also just the track position thing. We tried to, to talk ourselves into putting tires on it, try to drive back up through there. And, and when, once we did that, we lost our track position and just couldn't get back up there. From the outside looking in, uh, watching the race, it didn't look like the racetrack took any rubber and knowing it was 41 degrees and how that place is temperature sensitive to getting the rubber laid down. You talked about the track got tighter. Did did you feel like it changed much or do you, did you just take a little bit of rubber that we couldn't see and made you a little tighter? Yeah, like you said, it didn't really change colors by any means, but um, it definitely seemed like it, the track got tighter, whether that was just the track temp got lower and lower or, or what was going on, but um, yeah, we just seemed to get tighter as the race went on and we, we kept taking more and more wedge out and we weren't really gaining on it. And some of that's just, you know, where the cars are and what springs are, are in the car. And, you know, you have to be careful with not getting on shock limiters and all that stuff. And so it's, it's kind of a pain to be honest with you, but, you know, we were trying to, to do our best and, and get something out of it. It just never really got any better. Rodney, when we look at um, this year, the 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 race car, and I and I kind of want to set the off track aside, the 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 shortages of parts, the challenges that you had, you talked about. Sometimes you had to be conservative. The performance, the nuts and bolts of this race car. Can you assess? You know, are there things you like about them? Are you things you 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 wish we had a little bit different? Just kind of assess the car itself as you guys are eight races deep into this. Well, I would have to say that that it's been a surprise to me that we haven't had many failures, um, you know, whether it be the gearbox or, you know, brake issues or, um, you know, steering racks and steering pumps, um, you know, just all those things that changed, um, ha has been a surprise to me. I thought we would have a lot of failures here at the first quarter of the year and, and all that has went really well. Um, you know, honestly, I've got more and more used to the car over the last four months and it's still a race car. Like it's, it's kind of still fun to work on. You still have the, you know, for me, I'd never worked on anything. It had independent suspension in the back. So for me to learn, you know, what you have to do to make it, you know, the same as raising the right side truck arm three inches, like that's the things I had to learn and get used to, but, um, it still works the same. You just got to know what, what spacers to move and, and what studs to move and all that stuff. But, you know, I think the thing that, that still, that I don't like about what we're doing is just the shock limiters. I mean, every week it's just a disaster trying to get to the racetrack and figuring out which one you're going to hit. And that that's what happened to us at Fontana it hit the left rear shock limiter through that bump and three and four and spun us out before we even knew what was going on. And, um, but every week it's something different, you know, one week you're going to hit the right rear the next week you're going to hit the left rear at this track. And, and I honestly don't think we've got to the racetracks where it's going to be the most problem either. Um, you know, if we were on, if we were on the concrete this week at Bristol, it, it would be a huge problem trying to stay off that left rear limiter. And, um, so, you know, 
if I could do one thing better, that, that would be it. But overall, everybody's done a great job, whether it be at NASCAR or the people involved in making these parts and, and pieces and stuff. They've they've held up better than I would have ever expected. And and honestly, it's it's been good racing at, at most places. I know some of them could have been better, but most of them have been pretty, pretty dang good. One of the things I love about our format here on Crew Call is that we have a championship winning crew chief in Todd and a championship winning crew chief in you, Rodney. And sometimes you guys talk in crew chief ease, okay? Yeah. And I'm the dumb radio guy, shock limiter. Can you, Rodney, in layman's terms, describe what you're talking about with a shock limiter? Yeah, I mean, the, the shocks we run this year, you know, they're honestly just short. And um, so the shaft on them is short. You don't, you don't have a lot of travel. So, like... And, and my old school terms and, and Todd's old school terms, we had a nine inch shaft in the back and we could use, you know, seven inches of it at, at certain places and, and get around the racetrack. And, um, you know, now I think we only use about, you know, three and a half inches of shaft on these shocks. And then, okay. um, you know, the, the thing that we were going to do in the beginning was we were going to have these rub blocks on the bottom of the cars and that was going to be your limiting factor. And then, they didn't want to, you know, start dragging grooves in the racetracks and stuff like that. So those rules changed. And instead of dragging the, the drag blocks on the, on the racetrack, we just uh, made rules on making the shocks shorter. And, um, you know, as you make that shock shorter, that's your limiting factor is you want to get the car as low as you can, but the shock bottoms out. And, um, you know, all the shocks have, um, what they want to call a bump stop, but it's not much of a bump stop. It's a little tiny, thin, like eight inch thick piece of, uh, rubber basically. And, um, you don't really want to ride around on that a whole lot. Like it, it it's pretty, pretty rough and pretty solid. So, um, you know, you're, you're just right up against those limiters all the time. And with the diffuser on the back of the car, it makes the most downforce when it's the lowest to the racetrack, you can make it. So, you know, how low do you want to go to make the most downforce and how much do you want to hit a limiter? So that that's kind of where it's at right now. Great explanation. And, and one that's, that's good for everybody is, is, is Steve talks about, we can talk about things we're used to and uh, yeah. just explain it to the guys. That was a great explanation. So you talked about learning a new car, but a new car taking this car to Bristol dirt. Mm. Um, that, that's gotta be a whole new learning process again. And then uh, also, I, I guess, build off of that. Uh, what's different in the car going to Bristol? Cause I know that NASCAR did some different parts there. Yeah, they did. Um, you know, I'd say the biggest difference for this year is the tire. Um, you know, last year we showed up and we had these big balloon looking tires and, um, you know, all of them measured different and I was kind of old school in it. I had a, I had a piece of orange tape on top of the truck and I had every tire wrote down and I was changing tires around during the race. I might have, you know, three and three quarter stagger one run and two and three quarter the next. And well, now this year they're all radial tires. Um, it, it's a radial dirt tire, which I didn't even know we could do, but, um, they all measure the same. So, um, we're not going to be changing stagger a whole lot. So that, that's a big change for us. And then, you know, you don't have a lot of the brake valves that we all put in the cars last year. A lot of people had a, a valve beside the seat to turn the right front brake on and off. Um, you can't have that this year. Um, you know, there's just a, a lot of different things. They did get rid of the shock limiter rule for the dirt race. So that, that's a good thing. We can kind of put those lengths where we need to, to put them to, to, you know, whether you're going to top out the shock or, or bottom out the shock. But, um, you know, there's a, definitely a lot of things different. And the, the biggest key is, just, you know, is keeping the grill clean. And, um, you know, this year the grill, the engine gets the, it's air from the grill. So if you clogged your grill completely up, like some of those cars at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the race last year, you're not going to, it's going to be like a restricted plate on the engine at the same time. So, uh, it's going to be key to try to keep some of that airflow going and, and, uh, keep some air going to your engine. Rodney, you're a, you're a late model stock and asphalt guy. There are a lot of dirt guys in the garage. How, how are you, or there, are there some people you you've leaned on last year and you lean on, um, some people within your team? How are you? Well, your owners knows a little bit about dirt tracks as well. Are, are there people you lean on to kind of learn the, the, the dirt track one oh one stuff? Um, you know, going into the cup race last year, I leaned on a lot of truck guys that had run, 
these type cars at, at you know El, eldora and, and all those places and just trying to figure out you know what do you do with a truck arm car and and um, what do you try to do for nose weight rear weight um you know spring shocks that that kind of thing and the rest of it you know the racetrack side of it still goes back to you know when i started racing and racing dirt for a long time racing go-karts and right. and just back to that experience of you know what's the racetrack doing how's it changing what do you need to do with tires and pressures and and um all that kind of stuff so you know overall it's it's a little bit of everything you have to you have to lean on everybody you can lean on and learn as much as you can and never think that you're better than anybody else. And just always try to try to, to get all the information you can and what you can use is, is important and, and what you can't use is still important. So, you know, overall, you just got to take it all in and, and do the best you can with it. Yeah. Look, and, and, and going to, a, going back to Bristol, it was a day race last year and they really had with all the rain we had, wow. It was tough for them to get the track pre- prepared for us, had the truck race ahead of us, got to be really dusty. Uh, night race should help some of that. What do you think, uh, those that are listening to us, what, what should they be looking for that they wouldn't necessarily be thinking of uh, coming to Bristol Dirt? Yeah, like you said, I mean, last year, um, you could probably say it was hard to watch from the stands just because it was so dusty and and all that. I've actually been sitting here watching the, the race from last year, and it's hard to believe how – bad the track got but you know from everything i've seen this year and the late model races i've watched from up there and um the next gen test from last week all those things the racetrack has looked awesome through every every bit of it so um you know i think they've learned a lot and what they could have done better and and what they need to do and and all those things and you know you look back at last year and you know, Steve, that, that does all the, the stuff for, for Marcus at all these racetracks, he handled all that stuff on his own and, and he's not a, a dirt track guy, right? He's not a guy that has sat there and tilled the dirt up between every race and, and knew how to do it and all that stuff. And, um, you know, one thing you can say is he learned a lot last year and, and, um, every, like I said, every race they've had up there so far has looked good. Uh, having it at night to keep the moisture in the racetrack and keep some grip in it, hopefully keep some right rear tires on it at the same time and and uh, hopefully put on a little better show to where you can run the bottom and the top and, and uh, be able to move around a lot. Rodney, I kind of want to go big picture with you on something. Um, we in the media, we love uh, – uh, going down a go, going down a road, and the, and the road is Kevin Harvick in his career and how much longer he's going to race. We ask him about this all the time, and he kind of you know kind of brushes it off and puts forward. But one of the things Kevin has talked about is how much he has enjoyed working with you and your guys. And he even talked a couple weeks ago on MRN. Uh, we had him on our NASCAR Live program. He even said, you know, last year with the new car. I thought, do we want to start over again? Do we want to work together? But he said, I wouldn't want to go work with anybody but Rodney and these guys. I want to kind of turn that around to you, working with Kevin and working with your crew guys, Cheddar and and the whole gang. What's that been like to have such a good, cohesive unit, uh, working on the old car, working on the new car, and, 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 and going to battle as you guys do every week? Yeah, I mean, a lot of that's just having fun, right? I mean, yep. it doesn't matter what you do in life. If you're having fun with it, you, you're going to keep enjoying it and, and want to go to work every day and, and all those things. And um, it's hard not to, to have fun when you've won 35 races together. So, um, no. you know, when, when you can go and you can be competitive and you talk the same language and um, just everybody knows their role and what they're doing and, um, you know, I can come in here to work every day and, you know, nothing misses a beat. Like I don't have to worry about whether my shop foreman's doing the right thing or my car chief's doing the right thing or my road guys or my engineers. And it's like, a, it stays on track no matter what it, it's, it's like a, a little train track and it, it doesn't ever derail. It doesn't ever change. And, um, you don't have to babysit people and all those things. And, and I've told, you know, people this in the past that, you know, once he does retire, I have no idea what I could ever do, um, you know, because you get spoiled on how it is right now. And it's like, yeah, you could crew chief for somebody else or you could do this, you could do that. But I've also raced for 35 years straight and been going every weekend for 35 years straight. So 
you know, whether, um, you know, what's that to see what, what comes of that when, when Kevin decides it's time, but, um, we enjoy racing together. We, we like being around each other and, and the whole group does. And, and, um, you know, we want to keep it going as long as we can, but, uh, we know that nothing lasts forever and, and, uh, we'll just, we'll just play it day by day and, and see what happens. Well, it is. It's, it's, it's been quite, quite the ride, an amazing ride. 2014 champion. You talk about those 35 wins, pretty amazing as well. One of the things I love following you on social media, because I share with you a passion for late model stock racing here in the Carolinas. Of course, it's part of your past and you really seem to kind of keep your hands on it. First and foremost, just big picture, we're sponsored by Flow Racing here. Um, So, I mean, this is going to be a cheap plug for them, but we live in a time, Rodney, between that and Cars Tour TV it is, it is neat to be able to watch all of these late model stock racing or whatever kind of racing. We live in a really amazing time, don't we? Yeah, we do. You know, you look back at my past and you were, you were like really, really fortunate. If you got to run a Hooters race that was on TV or you got to run an ASA race that was on TV. Um, you know, those, those were scarce moments. And, uh, now you look back and, and you have the, the late model races, uh, every weekend, like there, there's something you can watch about late model racing every weekend, whether it's a dirt late model race or a pavement late model race, like you said, the cars tour races, um, you know, there, there's stuff that, you know, you can always get on TV somehow, some way. And, uh, when I was young, you just dreamed of that. So, um, it's awesome that we, we have that out there now and we can, we can do that. We can watch that stuff. And like you said, that stuff means a lot to me. Like I, I love those late mile stock cars. There's some people that would rather work on a super late model or some people that would rather work on a dirt late model that it's just, you know, some of it's just your past and, and your passion and, and all that stuff. But, um, you know, late mile stock cars about as old school as, as you can get some of it. Um, you know, to still have the crank 12 inches off the ground is, is pretty crazy. Um, but you know, they're, they're just, you know, they're wet sump motors. They don't have oil tank. They don't have oil lines. They don't have all that fancy stuff. And, um, they can burn the tire off in 50 laps. Like it did nothing. And you really have to baby it, drive it. And, uh, I just think it's, it's a great tool. It's a, it's a great learning experience for those guys that run those cars. And not only are you, uh, not only are you talking about all those guys, but I, I, you and I talked a little bit last weekend, you're putting together one on the side as well. You and Kevin are, I believe, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, eventually, you know, that I end up, you know, going toward Keelan's way, you know, Keelan has done a, a great job so far and everything that he's drove. Um, we've dabbled in a few different things. I, I built him a, an outlaw cart last winter and only went over there a few times and Kevin decided that wasn't really for him going over there on Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights or whatever. But, um, yeah, right now he's doing mainly the, the asphalt road course stuff. And, um, you know, and Kevin's also got a lot of good talent under KHI and, and, you know, trying to promote these young kids and trying to move them up. He's, he's got a lot of, uh, different, you know, things out there with, uh, running some late model races with Brent Cruz and, uh, uh, Connor Zelch is, is running some, uh, Trans Am races and stuff, but, you know, I'm sure, one of those guys I get to hop in the late model stock car and run some laps. And of course we got Ryan Priest too, that that's, you know, around and can, can, you know, drive that thing. And I kind of figured that, um, you know, Priest would be the one in it. I even told Priest to make sure he had a seat down here so we could start getting it in in the next month or two. And, and then at lunch last week, Kevin said that he thought he was going to put his seat in and he was going to drive it. So, um, that would be, you know, awesome for me. Um, you know, whether he does that or not to, to go run a late mile stock race with Kevin in the seat would you know, be one of those things that uh, you'd want to check off your list and, and do together. So hopefully uh, he's serious about that and we can make that happen. Man, I just, I got goosebumps thinking about that. Harvick in a late model stock car. Harvick in a late model stock car and his backup plan is Ryan Priest. Yeah, you're I not mean, bad. That's a pretty <laughs> darn good package. Jeez, I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and he mentions another guy, this Brent Cruz kid. Yeah. Um, that's that's going to be one we're going to be talking about for a long time in, 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 the, Kevin, uh, in the Kevin chain of, uh, of uh, KHI. A final question that I have for you, it involves late model stocks. Your very first gig as a crew chief was with Scott Riggs. 
Um, Scott's boy Lane is off to a great start. A couple of wins at Ace Speedway, a couple of wins at South Boston, mixing it up with Josh Berry down at uh, down at Greenville Pickens. What's it like for you? Do you do you communicate a lot with Scott and Lane? And what's it like for you to watching watching your your buddy's boy um, really evolve into a great late model stock racer? Yeah, for sure. And and we still communicate. And, um, you know, it went there for a couple of years. He would text me every week and ask me questions and stuff. And, and um, you know, it, to be honest with you, it's really hard to help somebody through text messaging and, and on the phone. And if you're not there and seeing, you know, what's going on. And plus, you know, those cars went to the low ride height rule a couple of years ago. And, and that kind of made it hard to you know, there's a hundred different ways of, of doing things that once you go to those kind of rules and, um, you know, overall we still communicate, but they have figured it out on their own over, over the winter. And they've come out of the box, you know, swinging this year and, and winning races and being competitive and to go, to go door to door with Josh Berry all night long the other night at, at uh, Greenville Pickens was pretty dang awesome. You know, you look back at last year, uh, and, and nobody could even touch Josh down there. Right. So, um, you know, he's won what two or three, he's won what three of them at South Boston already one at ACE. Um, he's been really competitive in the car tour races and, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's got it going on right now. Hopefully they can keep it going on. They build a new car and, and, uh, he was going to take the new car to Greenville last week and I told him he was crazy. So, um, I think they're going to save that new car and keep taking it to South Boston and, maybe have a shot at that national title title if they can, you know, stick up there and, and run all those races and, and get those points uh, st uh, stacked up. But, you know, I, overall, I, I hope that Lane can get a, an opportunity to try something at some point. He's, he's a good driver. He's probably better than his daddy. He might get mad at me for saying that, but, um, <laughs> you know, hopefully he can get the opportunity to hop in a truck sometime and, and go racing and, um, you know, have a shot at, at doing something pretty special. Yeah, I've watched a couple of those races. When you go toe to toe with Josh Berry at Greenville Pickens, and when you pass and beat Peyton Sellers at South Boston, you are on point. That's for sure, Todd. I, it just just amazes me the young talent out there, and and every racetrack has these guys. But it's impressive where we're at with the sport. Yeah, sport. the future looks great. The really future does. looks great, and just like, like Rodney talked about, trying to find those opportunities for these guys that, that yeah. have this talent. It's a it's going to be cool to see. Um, I got to be Riggs engineer for a year, uh, Did back you? in the Xfinity series, okay. uh, before we got to Rodney, but, uh, quite, quite a great, great family yeah. and a great lineage there. Uh, uh, cool to see your involvement back with, uh, with all the, those guys and, and keeping pushing the sport forward. So thanks Rodney. Really is good stuff, Rodney. Always a pleasure. We appreciate you taking some time and joining us here on crew call. Thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing part of your, part of your morning with us here. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. There we go. That's Rodney Childers joining us here on Crew Call. Stay with us. More in just a moment. Welcome back to Crew Call, presented by Flow Racing, the new home for NASCAR roots. Again, we remind you, you can subscribe at www.flowracing. Who knows, you may be watching the same race that Rodney Childers is watching. He's watching a lot of them, that's for sure. And that's one of the things I love about him is his passion for the roots. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a NASCAR roots, racing roots kind of guy. And uh, Rodney and I, we talk about that frequently, and I love it. Um, Rodney is just one of those guys in the garage area, Todd. Boy, he's been there for a long time. And you, you are going to have to go a long way into that garage area and will fail to find anyone to say anything bad about Rodney Childers. He uh, is just salt of the earth. Great, great guy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, going backwards through it, we, we spent a lot of, we spent a lot of years. If you look at when I was with Joey, yeah. uh, from 14, 15, 16, seven, no, not 17. Let me leave okay. that one out. <laughs> but, uh, we spent three years where we were pretty much side by side in the garage a lot. And our two groups got along great. Rodney's just great people and, and surrounds him. His, the team he put together when he went over there to yeah. do Kevin Harvick's deal, when he and Kevin both kind right. of made the transition to, to Stuart Haas racing, they put together a all-star team and, and really most of his guys have stayed with him. That's because, uh, that's because that he treats people right. He's a racer and he's got racers around him. They've got a common mentality and they do a great job. That garage area um, side by side, I've talked about that a lot when I do pit tours, talking about NASCAR, the way the garage is lined up. You're right next to your your 
two closest competitors. Yep. There, there, there's a lot of time you spend with other teams and other other people in that garage area. Yeah, there definitely is. And, and honestly, I think Rodney and I have had this conversation several times, and and uh, we liked working side by side because. Um, you know, we, we understood each other. We, we understood the way we were going to go about things. We'd learn from things from each other, Yeah, but they'd stay within, within our groups, you know, so there was, you could, yeah. I mean, you just, you pay attention to what people do. You, you learned a lot of things from, from pitting, being in the garage next to Rodney. So great respect, but not spilling the beans on what you're doing either. Re- and respect in the bound respect, great respect for each other and respect for the boundaries as well. Yes, definitely. That's uh that was something that we. I think we both understood and, and could trust in, in our groups between the two. And it was a lot of fun. Got a chance. I got to work around Rodney back in, in 2010 at MWR when okay, I was yeah. there. I was an engineer, but he's just uh, great people. Uh, his engineer, Dax, uh, that right. I, I worked side by side with him back at MWR. They were together back then. Another great, he's just got, like I said, an all-star group there and, uh, um, you know, all, top to bottom, they're, they're, they're elite. So uh, great to see. You know, great to bring him on and share a little yeah. bit of his passion. His uh, car chief is uh, Cheddar Smith. If I need to know, if, I'm, if I've got 10 minutes in the garage area and need to know the scuttlebutt on anything, uh, Cheddar's the first guy I go find out because he, he is, the, he is the, probably one of the most popular guys in the garage. Everyone knows him. Everyone loves him. Um, and, if you need to, and if you need to know anything, what's going on with the four car? He'll, uh, he'll, he'll whisper in your ear what's going on with the four car also. And uh, I just, the, the, the good group of people, for yeah, sure. great group. Fun people. stuff, that's for sure. We appreciate Rodney Childers joining us here on Crew Call. We have got a uh, marginally busy weekend coming up here on Motor Racing Network. MRN has the Truck Series race, the Pinty's Truck Race on Dirt. That is coming up for the Camping World Truck Series Saturday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Cup Series, our friends at the Performance Racing Network have that race Sunday night, Eastern Night Racing. Todd, I don't know. It's been uh, I don't know. That it's been a long time since we've raced on Easter, and then an Easter night. I don't think we ever have. It's uh, no, going to be it, interesting to see how this goes out. Yeah, I think it's a great way to kind of you know you get you get the Easter part of the day out. Yeah, and you've got a little bit something on at night and and a cool weekend because you're going to have Friday practice, two fifty minute practice for these guys on Friday, right? And then uh, then the heat races on Saturday, so it's a full weekend of of cup racing as well. Nice. Fun stuff, that's for sure. He's Todd Gordon. I'm Steve Post. We appreciate you taking some time and joining us here on Crew Call, presented by Flow Racing, the new home of NASCAR Roots. Subscribe today at flowracing.com. We'll talk to you again real soon.